Welcome to Building Foundations for Education. A lot of things are happening and they're falling into place. With me today are two special guests to tell you about a lot of exciting initiatives to support local students and teachers. Welcome, Pat Blackburn. I'm so glad you're with me. Thanks for having me. It's yeah. great to be here. And Janie Hoover, great to have you as well. I'm thrilled to be a part of this. And you two are so important to the work of the Education Foundation, so I'd love for you to tell a little bit, tell our viewers about your role. Um, well, I first joined the, edu the Board of the Education Foundation um, about a year ago, almost, um, and I'm a retired teacher. Um, I love children, I love education, and um, like so many uh, of our teachers who retire, you may leave the day-to-day, -day, but your heart is always there. Um, so I love our children, I love our students. Um, um, and so I just recently stepped into role as uh, president of our board, and we have a fantastic board. Everyone is, is so excited about our mission um, to engage students and teachers and our community leaders, um, just so that we can have the, the very best uh, opportunities for our students here in Indian River County. Absolutely. Yeah. Very exciting. And Janie, we are so happy that you are joining us as our special events coordinator. I'm excited about that too. Um, my heart has always been near and dear to education. My mother was a teacher mm -hmm. and many people in this community might have had her as a teacher at Rosewood Elementary School. She was there for many years. After that, she got her master's in guidance and counseling and continued to be engaged in the community with children. While I'm not a teacher, I'm in the advertising promotions and event planning role for my career, so I'm really happy to join the Education Foundation as the Special Events Coordinator. Oh, it's wonderful. We are so excited. So this year, we have something very special to support student teachers. It's our season of events. And Pat, do you want to say a few words before Janie kind of gives that outline? Well, I'm just so excited about our season of events. Um, we, ha we are doing some things that we've done in the past, but we're adding some brand new things. And I think the community is really going to enjoy them. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, our first event, and Janie will tell us about it, the Harvesting for Education out at beautiful Magnolia Manor. Um, what a wonderful place, and I think uh, everyone will enjoy it. It's gonna be so great uh, to get to know everyone and for us to come together and have a great time uh, supporting our schools and um, I'm just really excited about it and then we uh, of course we'll have our uh, events that we've had in the past our wine and wickets and our charity shoot mm -hmm. which I participated last year it was so much fun um, and you know you'll do anything for kids but <laughs> I mean these things are just so exciting and it's so much fun and so. something different oh yeah so take it away, Janie, tell our viewers what they should know. Well, first of all, Harvesting for Education is November 15th. Mm -hmm. um, it's going to be at Magnolia Manor. The evening begins at 6.30. People will um, go as far west as they can on 4th Street to 7290 4th Street and um, turn into the beautiful Magnolia Manor, which is an event space. And um, they'll be greeted by music and some students who are going to show what our money is invested in. Great. We're going to have a cocktail hour and then we will have a lovely farm to table dinner catered with a very interesting, unique menu planned by Chef Travis Beckett at Wild Time Catering. We're going to have music during the evening and we're also going to have a live auction to raise money for Education Foundation. So it will be great. And I think what people are, will enjoy is it's casual. They can wear their cowboy boots, their cowboy hat. They can interpret that event in any way that they like, right? Yes. We want it to be a really memorable evening. I've been to a number of farm-to-table dinners, and um, so I'm really excited to be on the other side to yeah. create the menu with the chef and to um, reach out to local food producers and get them involved. and. Um, there's a lot of science um, to preparing food. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Growing the food, preparing the food. <laughs> and I'm so glad you said that because I wanted to come back to the why. Um, the Education Foundation is not having parties for the sake of celebrating, but we have a purpose for raising money and mm -hmm. science is a big piece of that. Absolutely. I think one of the first times I participated uh, with Education Foundation was actually my child was mm -hmm. a participant in the science fair um, and he began uh, participating in individual he did uh, projects with his class right. um, and then individual projects as 
uh, through the years. And I would say that Science Fair has uh, been wonderful for him. Uh, he says, he's told me that because of Science Fair, he is able to, um, you know, take an idea, um, go through the experimentation and then, and the research, and then be able to explain it. Right. And he said that being able to explain to judges and then answer their questions um, has helped him in so many classes, more than just science. Um, so it, or it's really opened a lot of doors for my child. And um, then as I've gotten more involved in the organization, I just see uh, so many children uh, engaged in learning, engaged in science. And then um, those who are able, I know uh, we had one child who was able to go to state science fair last year and he wrote the sweetest letter and he said it's the biggest thing i've ever done it's so huge for my family and uh, that's where it's at i mean yeah. you know he he wouldn't have had that opportunity had it not been for education foundation and our wonderful uh, uh sponsors and 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 you know people who donate to the to the cause so it's it's just a wonderful thing and it's exciting i was sharing with janie that we had the sneaker exchange with beachland elementary school and uh, that's where Jake Owen went to school. And so Jake Owen is one of our supporters. So just so exciting to see the reach that um, our alumni uh, supporters who've, been, who've grown up through our district and then can give back is really exciting as well. There is a lot of opportunity for people to give back through our season of events if they would like to um, engage with the Education Foundation as a sponsor. Sponsors mm -hmm. help us um, make more money at the yes. events. and. Um, at, like with Harvesting for Education, some of the sponsorship levels have tickets included. So if a business um, wants to um, entertain their clients, this is going to be a really fun way to um, not only help the community, but you can bring your clients. Absolutely. And so we have some special things with Harvesting for Education and some wonderful sponsor opportunities for people to sponsor um, different parts of the meal as well. Different parts of the meal. So people can reach out to me at the Ed Foundation. Mm -hmm. um, through the website, any way that they would like to reach out to me. We have um, these beautiful save the date cards that are already out. And if you'd like to be on our invitation list, just um, go to our website and go to contact and um, ask for us to send you a direct invitation. Tickets are already available on Eventbrite for people who are tech savvy and used to buying tickets on Eventbrite. They can just go on Eventbrite and purchase their tickets right away. We do have a limit to how many people we can entertain that evening right. by the space, so, um, and we anticipate it being sellout. Mm -hmm. Fabulous. But that's not all. That's not <laughs> all. <laughs> so coming up in February, we have something that it will be a lot of fun, and having a good education is not a laughing matter, but we hope people will stand up for education, right? Yes, we are going to be producing an evening of comedy to benefit the Education Foundation. That will be at Oak Harbor, mm -hmm. and details are coming together on who the comics will be. And um, comedy is uh, something that takes a lot of brain power. It does. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and there's a science to that as well, what makes people laugh. And is, laughing is very good for you. And this would be another opportunity for businesses to sign up for a table, bring their clients, come out for the evening and laugh and learn more about the Education Foundation. Yeah. And I think that's um, something you brought up a great point. We really try and make sure that whatever we do ties back to our mission. Mm -hmm. And so Pat, do you want to speak a little bit about that? Because I love the tie in of brain power, you know, with science and, and also tying into ingenuity and innovation. And we just awarded $45,000 and grants are we're about to. Oh yes, it's um, our high impact grants. Our grant committee uh, just finished um, and what a wonderful opportunity mm -hmm. to look at these letters of ideas that teachers have submitted, wonderful ideas of ways that they can make learning engaging for the students. Mm -hmm. um, so we've got some really uh, neat grants that will be awarded. Um, I know, uh, some there's uh, a really good one at Citrus uh, with some readers and the kids are going to be able to work in small groups and you know it's uh, taking a child from the beginning stages of reading to emergent literacy right. is so important um, so that's a fantastic uh, that's a fa fantastic grant um, 
another one was the tech grant for the the automotive classes. The Sebastian River High School. Yes, so and we're preparing high school students for careers. After. I mean, when they finish, they're going to be certified and able to have a job right outside of high school. Um, and I just think that's fantastic because um, I think, you know, we focus so much on preparing children for university or college, but then we have a lot of children who want to go on to a, a job right after school. So it's great that we're able to help with those opportunities. Absolutely. Um, but there's just so many wonderful yeah. grants. So we had uh, $127,000 in requests. And wouldn't it be wonderful if we raised that much money through our events and we'll be we would have been able to fund so many Fund more. them all. That we would be wonderful. So that's that's the message if you're watching. Um, yes, yes. These events so we can fund them all, all these wonderful opportunities. And then beyond Stand Up for Education, we, of course, right before that, we have our Regional Science and Engineering Fair, our 28th year, and we certainly want to invite viewers to participate as sponsors and as judges. And um, Janie, do you want to say a few words about, about the whole opportunity for sponsorship with that? Well, we need, you know, sponsors, and they can be individuals, yes. and um, there is no lower end for the gift, and there is no <laughs> higher end for the gift. And um, all of the money is invested back in students and teachers here in the community, and all they have to do is look on our website, do the contact, and we'll be happy to come out and have a conversation with them. That's right. And we just sent out these Save the Date postcards um, to encourage all of our community members to sign up to be a judge. For elementary, you just need to have the ability to hear soft voices and to understand the scientific method. And for middle school and high school, we ask that there's related business or related work or college experience. So it's a great opportunity to see the good news in education. It takes place the weekend of January 25th, um, just in the morning. And of course, we invite people to come out for the award ceremony, which is my favorite part of the whole weekend to see people jumping up and down and screaming <laughs> I mean, for goosebumps. education. Absolutely. Yeah. I Good always stuff. get goosebumps because we're so used to going out to the football games and the basketball games and we cheer and to and see we these. we love that too. We love it. I love it. <laughs> but it's just so great when these young scientists come up on stage and everybody, their schools are all cheering for them and their parents are just as proud as they can be. And um, it's, just, it's just fantastic to see the glow on their faces. Yes. And, um, so I really love Science Fair, and if you've never volunteered um, as a judge or even just volunteered for the Science Fair, um, you may think, oh, but well, I'm not very scientific. But the um, elementary level, even if you're not, you know, very scientific, um, you know, those children are adorable, and they have really worked hard to be able to explain their projects to you. And you will learn a lot, believe it or not. And you Some don't the, have to be smarter than a fifth grader. You do <laughs> not. And you will learn so much um, and then just have a great time doing it. Absolutely. So. so other ways that people will be able to get involved, and you touched upon that, is we have um, two more events coming up in our season. One is Wine and Wickets, which mm -hmm. we've talked a little bit about. But then also charity shoot. So yeah, you well, got to shoot last year. I did. Okay, so for charity shoot, which I had never participated mm -hmm. um, we have it uh, out is at Windsor Gun Club, yes. and um, my husband is a, a marksman, and mm -hmm. he enjoys that. And I, you know, I'm from North Carolina, and we go to the out to the Christmas tree farm, and you know, we throw our own. So this is the first your own, your own clay pigeons. Yeah. Yes. So this is the first time I'd ever participated in, um, you know, that kind of uh, formal event, and. What a blast. We had a great a blast. <laughs> we had a blast. Um, it was a great time. And uh, we had a great group of men and women yes. who came out. Some of the women were phenomenal yeah. shooters. And then the gentleman, I can't remember his name, who the, who's the pro there. Nikki Sapari is Nikki. wonderful. We have to give a big shout out to Nikki. He really founded the event. Yes. And this will be, I believe, our... 18th, 19th year. So thank you to Nikki and the very generous people at right. for making And if happen. you're a novice, he will make sure that you have success. Um, you, you know, you may not hit them all, but he will help you and you will feel successful. And it's, it's a lot of fun. And the food was great too afterwards. Yeah. <laughs> so. And Janie, I don't know if you're a marksman as well, but we hope that you, we know I that you'll be I have done some us. shooting, but uh, <laughs> I always had a coach with me. So <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm lo really looking forward to uh, planning that event, giving it some new elements this year. Yes. 
um, being, you know, new to this position, I want to look at the event and give it a little bit of an extra something or another. <laughs> it's yeah. always so much fun. So I know with Janie's help, it's going to it's really be, be great. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so again, I, I kind of want to come back to the why. So we've talked about a lot of things about our season events or upcoming harvesting for education on November 15th, which will be at the beautiful Magnolia Manor and Wild Time Caterings graciously donated a dinner. The dinner, um, Wild Time Catering has donated a chef's dinner for 10, yes. and the details um, are in our latest um, email newsletter, yes. and I have the details. It's a value of $1,200, and that will be auctioned off in the live auction after dinner. Yeah. So if you want to have a dinner party, get with your friends, bid on this item at the dinner. Yeah, it'll be a lot of fun. But we do all these things, again, for a very specific reason. And I think when you're involved in fundraising, you're involved in nonprofit work, um, you do it because your heart is so in, so true to it. And Whether we have, your mother was a teacher. Yes, and we have volunteers that are helping us put this event together. Not only the sponsors, the volunteers, the board members, and you know the Education Foundation audience right. that we have, but it also gives us an opportunity to meet new people. Yes. People who like farm to table dinners, you know, they may not know anything about the Education Foundation. They may be coming for the food, right. which coming for the food is going to be a really big deal. <laughs> yeah. It is, and that, I'm glad you brought up that point because certainly our purpose is to raise funds so we can expand our impact, expand more reach to students and teachers, but it's also to make friends so that we can make new friends to do even more for our local schools. Mm -hmm. There may be people who are new to the community or just, yes. you know, getting settled here and want to meet people. What a great place to do it. Come well, to the farm right. to table dinner. It will be a great memorable evening and you'll meet a lot of new people. And you'll learn about education yes. in Indian River <laughs> County, which is great. Mm -hmm. So I know each of you have a very personal story and Pat, you could probably go on for hours if I let you. So <laughs> do you want to just share one of your favorites, one or two of your favorites? Um, sure. Yeah. Um, so in my previous life as a teacher, uh, uh, my, my favorite thing was a, I was a pre-K teacher in a public school system in North Carolina. Um, and we had children who were at risk. And so I know what it means when a child comes to school and they don't have all the tools in their toolbox, mm -hmm. be it, you know, they may have developmental delays, they may, um, you know, have a, a situation at home. But, you know, it's very difficult for them to come into kindergarten and, be expected to write your name, know your ABCs, count to, you know, a hundred, know your numbers. And, you know, they're just, you know, trying to survive. So the wonderful program, the Step Into Kindergarten program is so near and dear to me. Um, and uh, I know a family who was able to participate uh, this summer, um, a little boy, and he's actually, um, he's, he's actually staying with his great aunt and uncle, mm -hmm. who are his guardians. Um, and he had some developmental delays. He had been through a VPK program, but he just did not feel very successful. He didn't feel like he w enjoyed school. Right. Um, you know, a lot of people would say, you're typical little boy, only he, he, he um, you know, when you don't want to sit down and you don't want to do things, and then you also don't feel successful. It's just so, it's just well, so when hard. We, when we talk about the step into kindergarten six weeks, Bridge program. Right. I joke with Janie that these are skills adults could benefit from. You know, oh my goodness! <laughs> yes. Playing well together, showing respect, attention to detail. Yes. And, uh, we, but just yes. engaging, yes. just being able to engage them positively. Yes. Um, you don't ever want a child to start school on a negative note because that sets the stage. And right. um, so I did see him recently. He's in kindergarten now. He went through the program and. Um, he was so excited. He, he loves kindergarten. He's doing well. And I w was able to talk to his guardian who told me that he learned so much during those weeks of step into ki kindergarten. And he said, you know, um, you know, he was just so thankful um, for the program and for what it did for, for the little boy. That's so, awesome. yeah. That's great. Thanks for sharing. And Janie, I know education is near and dear through your mother's teaching at Rosewood through your own children, through yes. your own passion, through your sister being a teacher. So maybe share why you feel these are so important, well, these just, events. 
An interesting thing that happened to me this summer once I got into this role and I was at a business networking event and everyone stands up and says, you know, what they're talking about. And I had our sneaker exchange cards. Yeah. So I talked about, you know, shoes being a very visible sign of poverty and how it's also a health issue if children do not have shoes that fit properly, right. they can't think well, their feet are hurting, they're dangerous. And I was asking for donations for the sneaker exchange. So afterwards, a gentleman came up to me, and I had also mentioned the science fair, and he said, I want to give you some money. I participated in science fair when I was in high school, and that's why I am where I am today. Wow. That's this awesome. man is a professional who has retired to our community, is continuing to work in the finance world, and he told me his story about winning a science fair prize and getting a college scholarship. That's awesome. And it was just like... Oh my gosh, that is why <laughs> we do what we do. That's, That's right. It. That's yes. exactly it. That's phenomenal. So we hope for all of our viewers who have been out there today listening that they've learned a little bit more about the work of the Education Foundation and how they can be involved in our events. And before we sign off, I do want to take just a few minutes to talk about our new refreshed license tag. And we want to say a special thank you to our friends at the Indian River Tax Collector's Office who are not only helping us promote the tag, but collecting funds for the sneaker exchange. And also a special thank you to the clerk of courts that also was collecting for us as well. But this is a great way for you to support local education. When you purchase the tag in Indian River County, $20 goes directly to the Education Foundation to keep children on a path of learning with grants, science fair, sneakers, vision for reading, and a variety of other opportunities. It also supports professional development of teachers. So not only will you look smart by having this tag, but it matches just about every car color. It's gorgeous. And I did learn that white is the number one selling car in uh, the United States, or in the state of Florida at any rate. So a great way that they can get involved. And you can also have it personalized, if you like, to make you look even more impressive to your friends and family. So I hope, I hope you'll get one. Well, we've covered a lot. And um, again, thank you for being with us. We've talked about our events. We've talked about the impact. Is there anything else you ladies would like to add before we close? Well, I'm just so thankful for you, Cynthia. Oh, that's very um, kind. Thank you. I know I was just uh, talking about this beautiful set. And, you know, one thing the Education Foundation does is, um, you know, sometimes there's a need and you say, oh, there's a grant for that. <laughs> and um, I'm just so thankful that you are so knowledgeable and that, oh, and, you. and that you're um, able to uh, help in those ways. Well, it's, it's an honor, and one of the best parts of my job is working with our friends within the school community. So we're always talking about the needs not met through traditional funding sources and how we can meet that. So thanks to AT&T, we yes. were able to write this grant. Thanks to Brandon and Chris here from the school district um, visual media department. Yes. We were able to put that together and include Vera Beach High School's Construction Academy. So the name of the grant was Constructing Careers. And the students built all of this, and they learned That's about amazing. measurements, about the construction industry, and just really that applied learning, which I'm sure you did a lot of mm -hmm. in your early K years, carried out throughout the entire spectrum of, of education. So thank you. Janie, anything else? Well, I just hope that people will reach out to us uh, yeah. about our events, about our volunteer opportunities, and about getting more involved with the Education Foundation. And if they have a great story, we'd love to hear it. Absolutely. Thanks for being with us. We'll be right back. Support education tag funds in our schools are providing tutoring to hundreds of kids in kindergarten through third grade who are below grade level in reading. If you want to help our future doctors, lawyers, and teachers, you can do so through the Support Education Specialty License Plate that gives back to our local educational communities. Many times people buy a license plate not really knowing where the proceeds are going. It's inspiring to see the resources provided for these students. When you choose Support Education Tags, you are investing in future teachers like these as well as teachers like me. It feels good to know that when you purchase the Education License Plate, the proceeds go directly back into your local education community. What an easy way to make a difference in your schools. A portion of the funds from each purchase or renewal of a support education license plate is sent directly to your local education foundation to support teachers and students. Thanks to support education specialty license tag funds, I was able to get really cool classroom materials to make science come alive for my students. 
I'd like to encourage you to support children like the kids at Avalon Elementary School by purchasing a specialty license plate that supports education. Support education as if our future depends on it. You are making a difference for our kids and putting them on the road to success. Thank you. Welcome back. As we were saying, things are really falling into place and there are lots of great things happening, especially in the area of science instruction and science learning opportunities with our students. With me today are three special guests to tell you more of the great and wonderful collaborative work between the School District of Indian River County and the Education Foundation. Welcome, April. Great to have you with us. Thank you. Thank you. And Becky, Good great to, to have you back. You. Good to see you, Cynthia. And Pat, welcome. We should give you frequent flyer miles. Thanks for being here. <laughs> Thank yeah. you. So I'm so happy to have the, the A team, the science team with us. And I'd love for each of you to tell our viewers a little bit about yourselves and the important role you play. April? So I am the new district STEAM specialist, science, technology, engineering, arts, and mathematics. Awesome. And I'm working with all the schools, K to 12, uh, integrating and enriching experiences for students in the areas of STEM. That's great. And tell them, where, where did you come from? How did we get you? Oh, well, I was working at uh, a local charter school for many years, uh -huh. and um, I'm excited to start this new role in science and really working with um, K-12, to because I work with K-8 to for many years, so yeah. it's exciting to move into the high school realm. Well, welcome. We're glad you're here. Thank you. And Becky, so happy to have you. Yes, welcome. I'm glad to be back. Um, I am the district, one of the district science specialists, and I work mostly with K-8, mm -hmm. and uh, my role is to support teachers in the capacity of their core curriculum and um, a lot of side-by-side -side coaching, modeling, um, planning, and then I work alongside um, Pat, and we've done some work in the high schools together. That's awesome. Welcome. And Pat? Yes, and uh, my role uh, as district science specialist is working with, with uh, Becky and April. Um, our main goal, and my, more of my goal is in the area of secondary um, support uh, for teachers, as well as working with district programs that, that you've helped with through the Education Foundation. Yeah. So thank you so much. So I love, what I love about this segment is we have this wonderful collaborative partnership, which is so unique. I think it's something very different from other counties. And um, I, I think Pat is our historian. <laughs> we're, not, we're not saying Pat's old, <laughs> but I think we'll let Pat start. And then I'd love for each, each of you to share a little bit about that. So. Well, my first uh, opportunities with the Education Foundation was, was many years ago. I won't say how many, yeah. but quite a few years ago with uh, the Regional Science Fair. And the Education Foundation partnered with, at that point, it was Indian River Community College, yes. which is now the State College, and through the school district and to, to promote and, and, and actually run our uh, Regional Science Fair. Uh, and that partnership has grown through the years uh, to where uh, having an opportunity to talk with other um, districts, especially in the area of their science specialists um, with, with our meetings and having an opportunity to get out about, you know, we have a really, really good quality science fair from elementary all the way through the high school projects uh, because of the collaborative partnerships that that have happened between the Ed Foundation and the community mm -hmm. um, and the school district. So that's our start for uh, with the Education Foundation, what we've done, and it's been fantastic. Yeah, thank you. It's We, as an organization, enjoy it, and we can't say enough about the community support and the judges who volunteer and the generous sponsors. And Becky, I love your perspective because you've seen it from being in the school. Right. As a parent, mm -hmm. like, many, <laughs> many years, she survived. Whatever years, it's all <laughs> and then also in your important role with the district. So yes. share a little bit about that. I think it was a great experience for me to be able to have that background and the knowledge coming in um, that was elementary and uh, many years of fifth grade, which is you know is a has a very large focus on the science and science fair was always a large piece of our. Um, first semester and so having that experience and coming in with that as well as then as a parent um, knowing what 
so the amount of time that it took um, for a lot of the different projects over the years that were assigned for homework and right. um, you know supported in the classroom and so uh, we took on a pretty I think last in the last two years we really um, worked I think very close hand in hand with um, with the district along with the Ed Foundation to come up with some ways to really you know hone in on the fact that we wanted the process to be the most important piece going through that scientific right. process and for the love of science right. you know we wanted kids to really have that have that aspect of just the love and 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 the learning can you know to happen organically yeah um, so we the last two years I think some of the changes that were made um, you know it's challenging for for teachers to get everything in and and that's always always an issue but I think a lot of that parent piece has been taken off of the plate in the elementary um, way that it's mostly all being done in the classroom. That's and, awesome. You know, and that's K, one, two, they have their classroom projects and, um, you know, three, four, and five get more into the groups and partners. And, um, but again, if it, there, it's, you know, it's standards, it goes with the standard, you know, our right. state standards for science and um, nature of science standards are very important for gonna go all the way through, you know, through high school. And, at, and April, your role is so important in a new way. So you're seeing this from a whole different perspective and really trying for teachers especially to understand science is not one more thing, but it's a part of all learning, right? Right, and we also have updated the rubric to add the engineering part to the science fair, yeah. uh, or science and engineering fair. Yeah. So it's exciting to give the opportunities to students who might not want to uh, go through the scientific method and go through that specific formula, right. but engineer and build something. Right. Something. So that's what's really well, exciting. And I'm glad you mentioned that because the engineering component has always been part of the regional mm -hmm. fair, but I think, it, as Becky mentioned, is putting it in a way that maybe is a little more user friendly mm -hmm. for people to understand right. that. Right. So, yes, very exciting. Absolutely. But that's not all, as they say. <laughs> so we've had so much. More. We've, been, right. we've been busy as our group together, and it was great to bring you on April with a new project called Science on the Go, right. and we met and we said, let's write a grant to the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, <laughs> Right. and away we went. So tell a little bit about that. Right, so that's a competitive grant. So we were very excited when we, were, we found out that we were awarded $5,000 yes. to bring science to all of our elementary schools. Um, we had the idea to have Science on the Go, yeah. where we were going to work with the um, planetarium in Daytona to bring an inflatable dome right. planetarium to all of the elementary schools. And the students are going to be engaged in grade level specific right. uh, lessons inside the inflatable dome. Which I think is going to be super cool. And I think, Becky, you, when we talked about how do we, if we can't have more field trips, right. Right. then how do we do this? And you had several ideas on, mm -hmm. so we're hoping. I think this, and I think this too, um, because we did have schools who have tried this. And we have uh -huh. a school who did, you know, Citrus Elementary last year did have them come out. and. Um, and that's all due to a teacher. I actually, I'll give her a shout out. Miss Del Tufo actually Yay. remembered it from her when she was a student. She remembered right. that experience wow. as a student. And so um, it is. It was a thought we had had previous years of how to. What else can we keep bringing in? And because that was the one of the first things we knew it tied to standards, we thought, okay, we'll start with you know right away with something we've already one school tried. And so now we can give that opportunity to all 13 schools. So our viewers to understand. It, we actually have this inflatable planetarium that comes to each of the elementary schools and they'll be able to see the universe and touch the stars. Mm -hmm. But then there's also an important component and I'm not sure if this is a Pat or Becky question that allows teachers to right. kind of get some support so that they can tie this in to lessons they're already planning as well, right? And that's what, and you know, Pat and I have talked multiple times about how do we, you know, how do you have students, not just students, but teachers understand the application of yes. it? Yes. Space is something that's very hard to apply. It's not right. something you can reach out and touch generally. Right. So um, we thought with being but able to bring that But that would be a cool in, grant. I we know. could take kids <laughs> to space. <laughs> I'm, all about that. All right, yeah, yeah. I'm ready for that yeah. one. Yeah. Um, and so, I mean, that was one of the things that we worked on was how can we really um, support teachers? Because again, with, with elementary, they're not experts of right. that content. You know, that's not what, you know, they didn't go to, go to school to be biologists. They right. didn't go to school to be, you know, astronomists. So, um, so I think that this gives them that background as well to be comfortable then. So in the classroom, now those students can apply those lessons that the teachers now feel more comfortable doing. They yes. can relate it to, they can refer back. Remember when we were walking through? Yes. And so that's the ideas that we'd like to And I would think, with. Pat, you having been a middle school um, science teacher, see that so important, that continuum of a strong science foundation through elementary, so when they arrive at, in your classroom in middle school, that they had those concepts, right? Absolutely, and um, 
more, the more opportunities that we give students to uh, experience things like this, those are the kind of uh, memories, just as you mentioned, Becky, you know, that, that, that um, students have that stay with them for a long time. Yeah. And uh, those are the kind of things that, that encourage good learning. Absolutely. And I just want to give a shout out to Grand Harbor Community Outreach because they're one of our biggest funders of the Science Fair program, but they also invested in some science integration grants. So we have 45,000 that will be awarding. We've identified wow. the winners um, this past week, but almost all of those were an integrated science concept. Yeah. And I think what's exciting is, is those are building models or sustainable models that hopefully we can replicate in other schools. But that's not all. <laughs> <laughs> so we just were awarded a collaborative grant from Florida Power and Light, which was Florida Empowering, Empowering, Empowering. Teachers. And Becky, do you want to talk a little bit about that? Because part of that started last year. It did. It did. Um, we saw that, you know, one of the needs we spoke about and the biggest piece was supporting teachers mm -hmm. and, again, giving them time for collaboration. And yes. we know that we, um, I mean, as an educator, we learn so much from each other. Yes. And one of the, you know, one of the greatest um, pieces I think that I always took from um, my years at Beachland was being able to always rely on my cohorts and my colleagues and right. say hey I'm not sure how this you know how this works but I really love to get into your classroom and see what worked or um, yeah. and so from that now the empowering piece is um, gonna basically be our middle school uh, we're gonna focus mm -hmm. on our middle school teachers um, and they're going to be doing a collaborative component that will look a lot like some of the work you've done previously even with the math right. you did uh, the lesson study with the math so right. it's similar to that where they're gonna be able to do a PD to practice and so the components that they'll do is they'll work together to come up with um, lessons. They're going to work together to put in our new our core curriculum, which was newly adopted last yes. year, Discovery Education. They're going to be able to tie that core curriculum into um, Canvas, which is our LMS, and right. create some lessons that they can really, it would be great for new teachers, veteran teachers, but just to have everything in one spot. That was really, I think, the main oh, yeah. reason that we decided. And I love how you said that so beautifully in educator speak. So just <laughs> what we might want to say, just so people yes, understand, right. is that when you said the core curriculum, right. we're not talking about common core, right. but they're just common Correct. standards, right? Correct. So for people who are watching, I think sometimes they, that's that absolutely, can, that absolutely can be, like, can confusing, be confusing. confusing to people. But I also think, and I'm sure April, you can speak to this, one of the powerful things about this is really, teaching can kind of be an isolated feeling. And I think in any PD, the best PD is bringing teachers together. So what do you hope for this project or to see? Well, I agree that we, uh, when teachers get together in small groups, they learn from each other mm -hmm. and they're able to um, develop lesson plans that are specific to their grade level. So the right. middle school teachers at 6th, 7th, and 8th grade and specifically at their schools will be able to work together, um, finding planning time for teachers to get together and plan. It's often busy where they have to go from a meeting to pick up their students. Right. So this will give them a full day, several days, mm -hmm. for them to just sit down, talk about the standards, mm -hmm. come up with different um, labs and activities for the students to do and then we know across all of our schools our middle yes. schools across the district that they'll be kind of on the same page so it's very exciting to see them work together because ultimately yeah. we can deliver PD but like she said it's so um, they learn so much more from each other they do and I think and Pat you pray through your seeing how this is so powerful rather than the sit and get right, I know personally right. when I'm sitting in this I call it the cemetery seating and someone's <laughs> at the front like was it the um, peanuts, wah, 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 you know, I just, I have to experience it. I have to talk to other people. I have to understand, and yes. it's so much richer. So right. we're more the facilitators uh, yeah. of the event and kind of have guiding questions to guide them on what we're looking for, um, and then their conversations are so rich. And when they leave, they email each other and say, you know, that's what, hope, so what we're hoping the for. The powerful thing is they're coming up with the Correct. concept. Right. You aren't telling them, right? Right, yeah. right. right. And, and a lot of the teachers have some very, very good plans already in place. Yes. And it, it lends for more deeper conversations of, you know, what is super effective and what really does work. And we have a lot of excellent middle school teachers mm -hmm. that are doing some really awesome stuff. So we're excited about this because it does give them an opportunity to empower themselves too, mm -hmm. to be able to uh, uh, have a richer curriculum and, and a more exciting curriculum for kids. Because if, if kids are excited about it, and they're, and, and it's standards based. Uh, we're we're on the right track for re true learning. Absolutely, and I think so often um, we hear that teachers want support in classroom management, but it's really about helping provide 
and rich learning experiences, mm -hmm. as right. I understand. Right. I think it comes hand in hand. We've kind of always, you really see that if you have that student engagement piece, uh -huh. you'll you'll tend to see then that that classroom management goes right along. It, it, yeah. it becomes part of that, you know, of that everyday, your everyday routine. Absolutely. So more opportunities, we've got the Steaminar, which is in January, right? right and this yeah. is something new, April, right? Right, this is for teachers. So we're asking our teachers this year with the flyer and with the promotion, uh -huh. um, one degree makes a difference. So that extra little push for our students can make the difference, whether it's engagement, um, creating an exciting, um, engaging activities mm -hmm. for students. Like you said, it sparks their curiosity right. and they're interested in learning. So when you get them involved and when they are excited about learning, they're more apt to listen and um, apply what they've learned. So that's another opportunity for teachers to come together, exchange ideas, learn from each other. Right. And like you said, it doesn't have to be some overwhelming thing. Right. So we're excited to bring some of the different schools right now have um, different robotics programs that mm -hmm. they're doing at the school level, the Sea Perch over um, at the Flick. Yeah. We have uh, Spheros, which are a sphere type robot. Yes, that we're we getting... funded a lot of those. Right, yes, yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So we're getting those out to the schools and all of the students this year are going to be able to, we want all of our students to be able to touch and um, play with robotics. And it goes along right with the computer science yeah. standards that have been added um, where the students are coding and yes. um, learning real world skills and pushing them in the areas of technology. Absolutely. And as we've said, supporting science in the district is not something new. It's something we've been doing for almost 29 years. Right. So we're proud of that in many ways. And certainly want to thank Florida Power and Light for supporting that grant initiative. And we know we'll have more sponsors needed for the STEAM in our. Mm -hmm. But coming up in a matter of days, by time it's released, is a day in the life of the lagoon. Pat, take us yes. away. Well, um, this is the second year of this program, and um, we're very fortunate to have you to help sponsor uh, this year for the, the program. And the idea of the day in the life is for students to partner with uh, scientists and uh, other uh, individuals that are, that, um, that are um, enviro environmental stewards of the Indian River Lagoon and go out for a field trip for a, a half day in which they collect um, data from the lagoon, biological data, um, soil data, weather data. Um, they actually, in, uh, the biological data is even actually going out and seining into the lagoon and seeing what samples that they come up with, um, water quality testing. And the idea is for students to actually get some real hands-on, real life, experience of what scientists do. Um, there's, there's a number of different partners um, that work with each of the schools. We have most of the, most of the secondary schools are involved um, with the program this year. Um, really excited about it. Um, we've we've um, had a meeting last week with all the, the, the players involved to uh, finalize what and di where they're going to be sampling at, because everybody has a different sampling site, right. uh, to try to be able to get a broad spectrum of what the data is along the whole river. Um, and um, they met with their environmental partners to uh, finalize all the details. So That's great. really And we exciting. certainly want to recommend, uh, recognize Missy, is right? Yes, Missy yeah. Weiss. Missy Weiss. With, right, with See a Difference. Uh, as well as ORCA, they yes. are also involved with this program too. And, um, and I think for the Bernard Egan Foundation. So, yes. Yeah. So they've they've been involved uh, with that too. So um, we're it's a real community partnership mm -hmm. to to make this happen. And we have some real excited teachers and students that are uh, for October 10th is the day, um, and. Um, it's it's coming up soon. As so we'll you have mentioned. to have a shoe, a shoe, a show <laughs> afterwards to talk about it. That sounds great. So we've covered a lot of things from collaborating on science on the go, a day in the life of the lagoon, the Steaminar, Indian River Regional Science and Engineering Fair, and Florida empowering. I feel like I need a flash. I know. Empowering <laughs> teachers. Um, and so thank you so much for these collaborations. And we certainly want our viewers to know how they can get involved. And um, we are looking for judges for the Regional Science and Engineering Fair, which is the weekend of. January 25th, so if you have a love for little people and soft voices, we can use you as an elementary judge. You do not have to be smarter than a fifth grader. 
And we also need uh, middle and high school judges who have a background either through their education, through their professional work, or some other related field of study to help participate. So it's a great morning. It's a lot of fun, basically from 8 until noon, and then they're done. And of course, the award ceremonies are my favorite part in April. We can't wait for you to experience that. And Becky's nodding and Pat. Yep. Um, yeah. Share a little Great bit about time. that. So it's, what do you think is the best part? Well, as you know, for me, it, especially with the elementary awards, it's just really, really, really fun to watch the faces, especially mm -hmm. with the kindergartners and first graders up on stage and, um, you know, receiving their, their medals for, for participation and as well as the winners. Um, it's an electric crowd mm -hmm. that day, especially at the elementary award ceremony. Yeah. Um, the secondary award ceremony is a little different uh, feel, but when you hand it out close to, how much is it, Cynthia? Last year it was awards? almost a million dollars. A million dollars in yeah. scholarships and, and, and prizes and, and uh, with, with the secondary students and with some of the projects that they do are just phenomenal and you just wonder, wow, you yeah. know, the, the, the quality of the, the projects that we have and, and, and what they're doing is just amazing. It is, and we want to say thank you to um, FIT, who provides the largest balance of that, Indian River State College, Embry-Riddle, um, and then so many very generous local philanthropists and donors who um, provide those special awards, and that day it's inspiring. People are stuffing money in my pocket. It's kind of crazy, <laughs> but they're so inspired by the children that they see that they want to sponsor an award, which is really great. And Becky, you've been there, I know, with your own children. And that's the thing too is, is when you see it on both sides. I think yeah. it's it's the pride of you know seeing the pride in the faces of the of the yeah. young children, and then also it goes back to just so much work on the teachers' part. Yeah, you know that the, there's so many you know teachers come and support to see all the teachers come and support their students. Yeah, um, that's another big piece of it. I think that it, that definitely tugs at your heartstrings because you know so you know your teachers are vested and and they have such a you know love for their students and our teachers definitely support. Um, we do 100. We have an amazing group of science coordinators. I mean, I've Absolutely. been in my job. 14 and a half years, and uh, many of them are the same yeah. um, teachers, and I think that shows such a love and dedication um, for the program. But April, I can't wait for you to see my favorite part is we have this, we drop slides of all the winners, and the best part is <laughs> when the child has won, they turn around to see their Trying picture to. on the jumbo <laughs> screen, which is only natural. Right, right. But then, of course, to savor that moment, their mom or dad or guardian wants their picture. Right. Pictures. And then, so it's it's adorable. It's, it's the best part of the whole yeah. weekend. So, well, so, yeah. Sure. These students are the innovators. They uh, are the innovators, you know? and they're our future. Right. Yeah. yeah. And teachers really are the drivers of economy. Mm -hmm. We if we don't have teachers helping these children, then our economy is not going to go anywhere. Right. So. Well, we've covered a lot of great things, and I'm going to give one more plug, um, as we said, for the license tag. Um, it's a refresh license for learning, and every time it's purchased in Indy River County, $20 goes directly to the Education Foundation, and thank you to the Tax Collector's Office that's helping promote it, and they're also collecting donations for the Sneaker Exchange Program, so um, if you get one, you'll look smart, I promise. <laughs> so, anyway, well, thanks for being with us, and so we'll have to have you all back after a day in the life of the lagoon. Yes. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank, thank you. Thank you. Thanks for being with us. We hope you'll tune in again soon.